Hello, I'm Steve with Touch of the Master's and Holy Spirit Ministries. I wanted to talk today about meat for the Master's use, being that vessel meat for the Master's use. One day I was asking the Lord, I said, you know, I want to be an open vessel. I just want, you know, the Holy Spirit, God, Jesus, pour down through me, flow out through me. Um, my journey's been 35 years. My Christian resume is good and bad. Um, but I just want to be used all those things that God has instilled in me over the years. So anyhow, here we go. I'm going to kind of dive into what he showed me. He gave me a vision. I saw a large clay-like pitcher, but with an open top. There was a cross in the center of it. The sides were touching the top of the pitcher. It was spinning slowly. Then I saw Jesus on a throne high above it. I saw a river flowing from beneath the throne. It was a river of water, blood, oil, and fire. Gold and silver, along with all types of precious stones, were mixed in. Jesus spoke, and a light cloud came out from his mouth in a spiral circling the river about a half a mile out from the river. It started to rain from the cloud onto the river. The river flowed. The river and the cloud flowed from the throne down to the cross in the pitcher, flowing down the cross into the pitcher, filling it up to the top. It began flowing off, flowing, and the spinning cross began to stir it up. Then it flowed all down the sides of the pitcher. When it reached the bottom, the river and the pitcher also began to flow out through the bottom of the pitcher. They mixed together and began to flow out. All around the pitcher was a large flat field. It was a stony surface with some spots of open ground scattered throughout the field. As the river flowed out into the field, it washed right over the stony part but saturated the open ground. Then he gave me two scriptures, Ephesians 4:16 and Revelation 22 and 1. You know, He spoke and said the river flowing through and from the pitcher had just as much significance as the river flowing over the top. So the Lord wants to use all of his people the same. Read Matthew 17. You know, it's about a king in a field and his promises are all the same. And when it came time to get paid, the people that worked the longest and hardest and labored all day thought they'd get more and they they didn't. They copped an attitude. That's just my, you know, paraphrasing of it, but read it for yourself. So, but he promised us all the same. So we have just as much right and authority, whoever you are, wherever you are, yet you, to use your gifts and giftings and talents. And let him flow. Be that vessel. You know, we're all different kind of vessels. I mean, you know, when I go to start my lawnmower, I use a gas can out in my shed, but I don't take my milk jug. And pour it into the lawnmower and I'm not gonna drink milk out of the gas can two different vessels both needed I need you know I like milk need you know body may need it may not but you know my lawnmower needs the gas so whatever however God created you whatever gifts he's given you he's given me the gift of visions special yes because we're all special we're all peculiar people God's Christians are peculiar people we're different from the world set aside but yet not. It's just a gift. We all have them. It might be a gift of healing. It might be a gift of prophecy, miracles, tongues and interpretations, uh, just hospitality. You may have, gift, have, have a gift in the business realm and be able to financially support your church. You know, that's necessary too. It's just a tool. You know, I know when you talk about money, people get all bent out of shape or can because it's been misused but it's not always misused there's a lot of churches that aren't misusing there's some that are but you know that's a whole nother message but what's your giftings and callings you know God wants us to be those open vessels listening to him look at my message on who's your source you know God Jesus the Holy Spirit all living in you pretty awesome that's a message that the Lord gave me called God's Image of You. It's in a book that the Lord inspired me to write called Visions and Writings of Promise, Hope, and a Future for America. I'll send you a free copy. I won't ask you for anything, any donations, nothing. I won't send you anything else. I won't send you a bunch of junk mail. I won't even use your 
you know, just email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com. Send me your address. That's all you'll get, the book. The message is in there, God's image of you. It's awesome. The Lord inspired me to write it. It took over a year to a year to write it because it took me a long time to go through the scriptures. I put scriptures with it because I wanted it to be scripturally based. <laughs> Left out the interpretation because that's what God told me to do. There's a reason behind the title. I've got another book that the Lord already inspired me to write that's coming out soon too. The reason why I picked it, the, the Lord gave me the title is because we are in a grace dispensation. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, look at my message on economic collapse in the USA. I mean, that's things that are on the Internet about prophecies of doom and gloom. It's already here, you know. But God is seeing his people through because we're in a grace dispensation, because he has a reason and a purpose, and that's to reach souls and to reach this world and to reach the lost and the undone. As many and as much as we can occupy till he comes. So... You can look at my, probably see it in my left eye, look at my one about healing on, on April 27th. It's not done yet. First report from the doctors was horrible. My, my whole eye turned white when I put acid in it. I mean, literally, the blue in it. My wife was freaking out. Uh, spent the whole day in the emergency room. Had to go to a specialist two days later, but the next day God told me he was going to heal it. It's a long story, and I'll testify about it soon. So I stood on that. God's going to heal it. Doc, first doctor report, horrible. My eye's going to melt. The cornea's going to melt. The, gonna, the whole thing's going to turn white. Three or four operations. So this, that. Tra cornea transplant. You know, six months, a year. Just junk stuff. Like, that's not what God told me. So he said but we can put this thing in your eye with a contact lens with an embry embryonic tissue which is the stuff from a woman's childbirth um and it's been cleaned and stuff so i said and he said it'll, it'll help your eye rest i was like okay rest cool but these operations no that's what i'm saying to myself you know that's what god told me so put it in long story short a week later they take it out it hurt still hurts it's annoying it's scratchy i want to pull my eye out and itch it but i can't i can't itch my eyelid it's just not over yet but he he looks at my eye and he's like the first diagnosis was i killed everything it was like putting drain on my eye I killed the stem cells the wimbly cells everything around my eye was you know that regenerated dead gone toast destroyed devastated well, that's not what God told me. So the second report after they took this contact lens out was, oh, wow, there's new growth. Oh, wow, the stem cells are starting to come back. Oh, wow, there's life. Well, of course, because God told me that. You know, and I don't know why he heals some in some miracles and some he doesn't. You know, I know two people that one lady that, re, that we went to church with that recently lost her battle to cancer. I don't know why God didn't heal her. And I know another guy that for four years was cancer free, but when it came back, it came back with a vengeance and destroyed his life. In this case, God performed performed a miracle. I would have did it with one eye. I would have still minister with one eye. I had to use reading glasses and a magnifying glass to see my Bible. But he told me to heal it. So sec, second report, even better. Third report, oh, it's excellent. Oh, they did this test and it was and it was normal and think you know two thirds of the way healed and. Like, did you think it was going to come this far, Doc? No, not this. No, I thought it was going to take a long time, you know. So, well, that's not what God said. So, I'm going to go with what God said. But, anyhow, that's kind of a whole separate message. So, but yet it isn't. It's about the grace dispensation we're living in. And I don't know what's going to happen in your lives or our lives. The world could flip upside down tomorrow. So, watch the news, you know. It's a lot of stuff going on, you know all over the place and it's not all good so but god is good his grace is sufficient he's got his people covered under the blood of the lamb we're going to be okay god's going to see us through this whatever whatever it is whatever your trial is your temptations whatever wherever you're involved whatever you know you got unsaved children on drugs whatever God's got your life in his hands. He just wants us vessels that he can use. 
pour down his spirit, flow out through you, out into this world, to those that will hear. You know, it's just, it's, it's place yourself in God's hands. Let God do the work. You know, you're the clay. He's the potter. Let him finish working on your vessel. He may already be working on it. I've, I've already finished and it's just root, getting rooted and grounded and deeper in the word. You may be having to die out yourself. And maybe, you know, I don't know what stage you're at, where your journey's at. God does. Mine was 35 years to get here. So, anyhow, please watch some of my other videos, share them with others, likes, dislikes, comments. Um, like I said, you can email me at steveyoungstrom at yahoo.com or youngstromsteve at gmail.com. Uh, send away for a free copy of the book. It's an awesome book. It's not really about the book. It's just inspirational, spiritual, a s insight into what God's doing in this last day, end time move of his awesome time we're living in to be a christian not time to shrink back time to stand up for for the truth that's the whole theme of my met my message christ in you the hope of glory god jesus and the holy spirit all living in you in his word we have a power and authority to take this land back to possess this land There's just an awesome revival coming because that's the way God planned it with Jesus. Like I said, the, the world could flip upside down. There could be, you know, World War III could start tomorrow. I don't know. You know, there's, you know, Yosemite. They say Yosemite, it's an active volcano. You know, it's old, old geyser. It's always constantly brewing. It's a 60 mile wide cauldron. Well, it's a volcano. It's erupted in the past got america in its sight they say that if it ever erupts the super volcano and three quarters of america would be covered in a foot of ash so you know what if that happens i don't know you know what god has in store i don't know what the what the end is jesus does you know it's the beginning from the end and right now and we got today and we're here it's time for us to take a stand as god's people sons and daughters of the living king jesus living in us manifested through us you know read matthew 10 greater work shall you do you know heal the sick raise the dead if you went into a lot of the church church world today and stood up and said that you know i'm gonna heal the sick and raise the dead a lot of them would probably call the sheriff and tell him to come get you there's some crazy person in the church it's in the Bible. There's a lot in the Bible. God, where's what's your source? Don't believe me. Ask God. I I've done that before. It's times when I didn't understand. I was like, God, I don't, you know, show me. And you, you know, my memory is not great, the greatest. I don't know the scriptures like a lot of preachers. I can't quote them, and I don't, you know, I haven't studied the Bible nearly enough. I do study it. So, but God will give me scriptures. And he'll say, James 3, 17, I was going through the middle of, midst of a trial with someone and gave me James 3, 17 about the wisdom from above. Uh, just different scriptures, Ephesians 4, 16, you know, and I'll have to go look them up. And they'll be relevant to what either I'm going through or need to know or direction from the Lord. They'll just, they'll fit. Ask God, you know, show me in your word. Teach me. Get it from God. Get it from your source. Don't even listen to me. I'm not, I'm just being that vessel that's wanting to be directional and flow out and let the Holy Ghost flow out of me just like he has to flow out of you. Be those, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It's just an awesome time and we all play a part. If you're watching this video, you're playing a part. It's not about you watching my video. It's not about me. It's a, it's about you and your relationship with Jesus and your personal walk with God and the Holy Spirit living in you and God's Word living in you and what He has called you to do about your giftings and callings and elections. Building up the church, the body of Christ. That's what I want to be about. That's the vessel I want to be because that's what he called me to be. But I'm no better than 
anybody else. I don't have a greater position than anybody else. We all have gifts and callings. I can't do the things that God called you to do. Not even close. Not even reach the same souls. We may not all have a Billy Graham type of ministry. That's okay. We all have a calling and a gifting and a responsibility. So wherever your journey's at, use what you got. You know, my wife and I have a homeless ministry. Well, not everybody wants to deal with that. People want to go down there and feed them, but not everybody wants to get into the depths of the... It's a dark, dark, demonic place. Those people are kicked around. Some of them are there because of them, because of themselves and their poor decisions, and some because of laziness, of course, absolutely, and some just circumstances. You know, it's you dive into that, it's a pretty messy place. Not everybody wants to jack with that, but that's the calling that the Lord gave me and my wife because we've had some broken-hearted experiences, both of us. Broken, broken lives came out of that, and... You know, so, but that's just what God sent us for now. So I don't know what he's calling you to do, but he's calling you to do something. He's reaching for you. He wants you to step up to the plate. He wants us all to step up to the plate. He wants us to be those vessels that he created for his honor. Whatever they might look like, wherever they might be, wherever they might be placed. He's got a specific purpose. Like I said, gas can, milk cans, milk jugs, whatever all serve a purpose you know we there's gifts and callings that god has placed in your life and he wants you to use them so anyhow that's kind of my message sorry to be a little bit long um pretty excited my wife's going to come on and start helping me with this she's got a lot of wisdom a lot of understanding a lot of prayer life very strong she's got awesome testimony I finally convinced her to you know she's kind of a little shot not really shy but just not sure that she wanted to do this so maybe yeah a little shy you know but I just kind of convinced her she's going to come on this Thursday so I look for her um, it's awesome the things that God's doing and God in store for his people looking forward to any of your comments uh, tell me about your giftings and callings let's you know share likes dislikes like i said you know share this video with others or my other ones appreciate you watching god bless you um awesome jesus is awesome thank you for tuning in